listening to the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Radio's authority on the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology. Celebrating 25 years of broadcasting. Broadcasting around the world and to the great beyond. The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Good evening, one and all. Welcome to the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I am your host. I am your guide as together we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, Talk Star Radio Network, and in Europe on Radio X. If you'd like to send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com is our website. On all uh, social media networks, Exxon Radio TV, and our radio website, where you can find out what we've done in the past, what we're doing right now, and what we'll be doing and where we'll be going in the future at xzoneradio.com. Exciting news, Nation! After years of um, negotiations and working with uh, a broadcasting house in the U.S., mid-May... The X-Zone TV channel will be launching, and if you want more information on that, it will be posted in a few days at xzonechannel.com. 24 hours of paranormal programming, parapsychology, new age, ancient mysteries, and much more. Just imagine that. Your favorite shows, bang, all in one place. My guest this hour is Dom Valerio. He is the owner of Upstate Upstate uh, Supernatural, and now working in the field since 2007 with around 50 to 60 investigations under his belt. 
Dom and his good friend Nick formed Upstate Supernatural in the summer of 2014. Both of them had investigated together for numerous years and decided it was time to create a professionalized paranormal investigation team. Within a few months of forming their teams, they had the honor of having a sanctioned hunt in the local mall both of them had already had paranormal experiences in. Joining me now is Dom Valerio. And Dom, welcome to the X-Zone. Hi, thank you very much for having me on your show. It's great having you with us. Dom, tell me about this paranormal experience that you and Nick had in this mall. Uh, Nick was actually a security guard within the mall. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, assistant manager at one of the stores that was there. And uh, I had previously done an investigation at a friend's house. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of my second experience, but... At the mall, he asked me to just kind of walk walk with him. He knew I'd, I'd already investigated once. And as we're walking through, we actually we heard voices. As we were walking through, we had a gate that got punched. Uh, one of the, the steel gates that closes up for the stores was actually hit. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we were standing in front of one of, the, one of the storefronts. He was on one side, I was on the other side. And we were about 20 feet away. And clear as day, you could hear a male voice say please and i thought it was him so i i turned around and said hey what's what what did you just say Mm -hmm. and uh he goes dude i didn't say anything and from that we uh got to do the sanction hunt within the mall we actually captured a shadow figure on our surveillance system which was pretty profound we never thought in a million years we'd ever capture anything like that but why do you think this mall is haunted nick are you there yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. I, I said, why do you why do you think this this mall is haunted? Uh, just numerous accounts of individuals that have been working there mm-hmm. have heard things, they've seen things, and you know our experiences that we've had there. It, it just kind of drove us into the field, made us more curious. Mm-hmm. So we started to do investigations just by walking around. You know, they'd be locking up, and we would have a voice recorder and see if we'd capture anything. And almost every time we'd have voices, we'd have uh, a female talking to us, a male talking to us. Our theory with why it's haunted is actually that being that it's a mall, there's a lot of people that would go there. Right. Or there used to be a lot of people there. So if a spirit's going to try to communicate, it's going to go to a highly populated area to try to communicate, thinking that one person may be able to hear them or talk to them. Gotcha. Dom, stand by. You and I have to take our first break. Exo Nation. Dom Valerio is our special guest. He is with Upstate Supernatural, Upstate Supernatural, and the website is www.upstatesupernatural.com, and we'll both be back after this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Afterlife expert Roberta Grimes was the first one to say that dying can be fun. Now her best-selling book, The Fun of Dying, is available in stores worldwide. So if you wonder whether death ends life, how it feels to die, or what heaven might be like, The Fun of Dying was written for you. And if you have always been afraid of death, or if you worry that your life has no meaning, let The Fun of Dying ease your fears and bring new meaning to your life. Nothing said in The Fun of Dying is based on the teachings of any religion. Instead, Roberta draws on evidence to explain how death happens, how it feels, and what comes next. A lot of the best death-related evidence was produced in the first half of the 20th century. When it is put together with recent discoveries, it tells a consistent and amazing story. Roberta Grimes blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Her wonderful book, The Fun of Dying, is available on Amazon and at stores worldwide wherever books are sold. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. 
I'm Wilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we will weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Wilda Wiaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Star began to demonstrate a metaphysical connection to the spirit world as a little girl. Her family noticed the connection, but it was a great-grandmother who told the family that Linnea was indeed gifted. The great-grandmother, who was also gifted, felt that Linnea had indeed inherited these attributes. It has been noticed that oftentimes, such things are passed down through the generations. Linnea was also born with a call, a thin white membrane across a newborn's face. Legend has it that if the baby is born with this call, the child will have second sight, or what we call psychic abilities. Linnea Starr does past, present, and future, and has the gift of prophecy. It is written within scriptures that if you are able to give factual information, and prophecies indeed come true, the gift indeed comes from the divine realm. Linnea Starr does large interactive groups as well as private gatherings. For more information on Linnea Star or to contact Linnea for a one-on-one consultation, visit her website at www.linneastar.com. That's www.l-i-n-n-e-a-s-t-a-r.com. Dom Valerio is our special guest, www.upstatesupernatural.com. Dom, how haunted is upstate New York? Uh, honestly, there I mean, there's a lot of history within upstate New York, mm-hmm. uh, going all the way back to the Revolutionary War, uh, the Battle of Saratoga. Saratoga is a New York State. And then uh, you also have the New York State uh, Canal System, which actually I, I did work on that on a tour boat for seven years. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of history just in New York State. So I, I would say it's high, with all the history, mm-hmm. it kind of stems to why there's probably more activity in this area. Is that the canal that goes from Lake Ontario to the uh, Hudson River? Correct. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I, I actually uh, brought a ship down, uh, a 40-footer from St. Catharines, Ontario, all the way down to New York City. And that was, it was just a gorgeous, uh, gorgeous adventure. Um, so how did you, how did you prepare yourself to become a, a supernatural investigator? On, honestly, for, uh, kind of preparing, I, I think with anybody, it's, it's a lot of research, mm-hmm. reading a lot of different things. I, and I, I hate to admit this. I mean, a lot of other people probably have seen some of the shows and stuff like that. I saw a few of them as well, but a lot of it was just reading books and doing a lot of research to try to figure out if it was something I was really interested in Mm -hmm. or if I was just, you know, thinking I was going crazy. (laughs) And uh, I definitely found some very interesting uh, tips and tricks to try to do within the field, and that kind of stemmed me to start doing it. What has been your most exciting supernatural experience that you've had? Uh, My my most exciting experience would probably be within the mall uh, with, with just how much activity we get. And I've actually heard from numerous individuals that they could just say Dom within the mall and they'll start to hear more activity just because they've kind of got to know who I am. Uh, for the strongest activity I've ever had was a, a private business, and I actually was stopped dead in my tracks. 
I was walking and then was stopped dead in my tracks, couldn't move. Were you held by an invisible force, or was it just the fright of the moment that stopped you in your tracks? Uh, I believe it was I was held by an invisible force, uh, and there was an EVP that correlated with what happened, which was stop meddling with us, was wow. captured right before I was stopped, but I physically could not move forward. I just kind of was locked in a position. Why do you think, Dom, that there are some people who have the ability to to experience paranormal or supernatural events, and that there, then there are other people who nothing nothing phases them. I I, I actually have a, a very close friend that's a he's a skeptic, mm-hmm. and the reason I say he's a skeptic is he just he doesn't really believe in the paranormal type right. thing within the field. Um, he does know what I do, and he's highly supportive of what I'm doing. But for him, he has never had a paranormal experience. He's been to some of the most haunted locations, never heard anything, never saw anything. Do you and think that's think because he's a spe- is, because he's an open a, mind? Yeah. But wouldn't wouldn't a skeptic or someone with the, and not a mind that is as susceptible to accepting the unbelievable, wouldn't they also be able to? to experience something to some degree that would make them or that would lead them to thinking again that, you know what, there might be something to all this after all. To a certain extent, I mean, there's there's definitely different types of skeptics as mm-hmm. well, but I think for a majority of the skeptics, in a way, a lot of them try to figure out a rational explanation right. on why that happened. And if they can't come up with it, then they kind of just leave it open. They don't immediately jump to it's paranormal or jump to it was, you know, something that was unknown. It was just something they haven't learned what it is yet. Right. What is Ghost Hunter Tech? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear what you said. Uh, I said, what is Ghost Hunter Tech? Uh, Ghost Hunter Tech is actually a... Um, Basically, it's a, a business of building uh, ghost hunting gear. So with Ghost Hunter Tech, I'm actually showing people how to do hacks, how to do mods, how to build um, do, do-it-yourself gear to try to save individuals from spending so much money out in the field. How successful have you been with the, the manufacturing or teaching people to build their own equipment? It's it's still in the early process, so I'm still trying to get that out there for individuals. But I think in time it'll be beneficial for the field. Why don't you think that mainstream science and mainstream technology isn't getting behind the the uh, the quest for people who are searching for the truth when it comes to the paranormal or supernatural? A lot of it, it's difficult because the individuals out in the field sometimes don't know what they're using. So, I mean, for the for the mainstream equipment that's coming out, investigators that don't know what they're actually using, I mean, if they're following what a TV show showed them or what a movie showed them, they're not going to know, you know, how, how much distance their voice recorder is going to Mm-hmm. Record. They're not going to know how how a camera is going to flare in different reflections of light. So I, I really think that's the limitation for it is because of that. The television shows that are available now on mainstream networks. Do you think that they're an asset to the Paranormal Investigation Committee or a hindrance? Honestly, I, I it, it's a double edged sword. Uh, it, it's given people an interest within the field, but it's not giving them the full truth of what the field is like. Uh, the, the field for a real investigator, you're sitting in the dark for five, six, seven hours, and you may not hear anything. It's not until after review that you actually heard something, whereas the shows, that they make it feel like it's in real time. Yeah, that's uh, I, I'm hearing that a lot from people, and, and some of the investigators are saying, you know, People are seeing the sensationalism and and some of the out of character um, actions of some of the some of the so called investigators that 
when they get into the field, you know, they're they're bringing all the bad habits with them. Correct. I, I, I do believe that as well. If you had your choice of going to any, I mean any, dream location to investigate, where would they be? Uh, one of my uh, big ones would be the uh, USS Constitution in uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, just for, out of curiosity, the history of the boat was used during the Revolutionary War. And then the other one would be Alcatraz. I've always mm, had damn. a fascination with Alcatraz. And I, I just think it would be fascinating to go there and, you know, just at least see the location, e- even if it was just with a voice recorder. Right. I mean, I wouldn't even need anything else. Where are some of the most... Uh, well-known haunted locations that you've you've done your own investigations on so far? Uh, Probably the most well-known place that we've investigated, we've done it twice now, is uh, Rolling Hills Asylum. It's in East Bethany, New York, which is about 45 minutes from Buffalo. Mm -hmm. And it's been classified as the uh, second or third most haunted place on the eastern coast. And then uh, beyond that, I mean, there's there's been, and I know a lot of other investigators would agree with this, some of the upper locations that have activity, some of your private residences or your private businesses that you do an investigation for actually have higher activity. Yeah, I, you know, I when I hear all the stories about people who go to these, you know, the, the same locations time and time again, you know, whether it's... Um, an asylum, a hospital, or Gettysburg, I often wonder, you know, are are they expecting a different different result? Why do people still go to the same one time and time again? Like, nothing changes. I mean, for for some investigators, I, I think for a good investigator, they're going back to the same place because they're connecting with who's there. They're getting to know the the spirits that are there, the the ghosts or entities, whatever you'd like to call them, mm-hmm. they're getting to really know who they are. So every time they go there, they're they're getting to learn just a little bit more, and it, it brings them back, you know, to reevaluate or validate what they're doing. But when you've got so many people going to these these different locations, you know, Gettysburg or the Waverly or or any of these places that that are on the top ten of the uh, ghost tour. The map, I would imagine. You know, don't you think that the the spirits would kind of get pissed off and say, "Hey, guys, we've had enough of this." I I, I do agree with that, uh, but I also think I, I've seen both aspects. I've seen spirits through communication that they'll say, "Get out of here," and then I've seen other spirits that say, "Thanks for coming back. It's nice to see you." And and I really think it's the energy in which the investigator is putting out there. You know, if they're going out there trying to provoke or trying to just get activity to rise, that's when they're going to get the get out of here. You know, they're they're annoying them at that point because they're not they're not really get, getting mm-hmm. to know their story. Yeah. And one thing I one thing I can say, and I really admire about the majority of of groups that I've talked to, is that. Ghost hunters or supernatural investigators or paranormal investigators are, at the very root of what they're doing, historians. Yeah, I, I definitely yeah. would agree with that to to a large extent. I, I I've seen a lot of people kind of classify it more as science, mm-hmm. but I per, personally, for me, I've always yeah. loved history. So I mean, it kind of makes sense for me that I got into it because of the history aspect. Yeah, I, I, can, I can, you know, I don't look at it as science because scientific methodology is not incorporated into into spirit investigation or supernatural investigation because mainstream science has not accepted it. Do you think that'll ever happen? I, I think in time, I, I really do think that it will become more accepted. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to take a lot of um, a lot of different methods and, and theories are going to have to come into play before that happens. All right, Dom, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exonation 
Dom Valerio is our special guest, and he is with Upstate Supernatural. Now, the website is www.upstatesupernatural.com, and Dom and I will be back on the other side of this news break at the bottom of the hour. We have to pay our bills on the other side. And uh, more of the paranormal, things that go bump in the night, as well as ghost hunting tonight here on the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? Well then, meet Dr. Kimberly McGeorge and her cutting-edge breakthrough knowledge that combines science with possibility. Dr. Kimberly brings real-life answers and healing to those open to alternative solutions. She teaches solution-based programs and classes that will change all areas of your life forever. Specializing in conscious creation, intuitive readings, and energy medicine, you can rapidly shift health, relationships, business, and money and abundance challenges quickly. Receive her best-selling book, Secret to Everything, at no cost by going to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone. That's right. Transformation can start now. Just go to secrettoeverything.com forward slash X zone and receive Dr. Kimberly's book for free. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Thomas Jefferson was a Burgess of 27 when he met Martha Whale Skelton, a 22-year-old widowed heiress who was fondly called Patty by her family. They were married on January the 1st, 1772, and they took up residence in a cabin on the building site on top of a Virginia mountain that Thomas had named Monticello. As Thomas and Patty slowly built their first version of the great house at Monticello, the Revolutionary War was heating up. Patty, with difficulty, bore five children, but only two girls survived. Thomas's political career developed to the point where he was often away from home, but after he authored and signed the Declaration of Independence in Philadelphia, he resolved never again to leave his wife. He was elected the governor of Virginia, just as that state became the revolution's last battleground. The Revolutionary War ended in 1781, and Thomas gladly retired altogether to my family, my farm, and my books. But Patty continued to want to bear her treasured husband a son, and late in the summer of 1782, she died of kidney failure at the age of 33, four months after having borne yet another girl. Thomas was so devastated by her death that he never remarried. He mourned her for the rest of his life, even as he helped to frame the peace in France and then became the first Secretary of State, the second Vice President, and the third President of the United States. This story is true. Thomas Jefferson was such an obsessive letter writer and record keeper that we know where he was and what he was doing nearly every day of his adult life. Every significant thing he says in My Thomas comes from his contemporary writings. My Thomas by Roberta Grimes is now available at Barnes & Noble, Costco, Target, Books A Million, Hudson Booksellers, Kmart, Walmart, Sam's Club, Walgreens, CVS, and online at Amazon.com. You can visit Roberta Grimes online at www.robertagrimes.com. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. 
Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. What Happened in Benghazi is revealed by Nicholas Genix, author of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. He informs the American people that President Obama deceived them by advocating a strong foreign policy prior to the 2012 presidential election, and Hillary Clinton supported this deception. As the title infers, there is a connection between Obama, Islam, and Benghazi. Ample evidence informs Americans that Obama's early indoctrination in the Quran developed an infinity for Islam, why the Quran is the source of discontent in many countries, and why the Obama foreign policy deception led to poor military action and caused the loss of American lives in Benghazi. Genex provides 36 questions for the Select Committee on Benghazi to validate if Americans are justified to mistrust President Obama and Hillary Clinton. An overview of Obama, Islam, and Benghazi is presented on the website www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Annie Callahan, dedicated to negotiating a position for Earth within the Dagaronian coalition, had trained for three years to become an Earth ambassador. Yet, the very eve of her arrival at the capital ruling planet, she is claimed as destined mate to an oversized, mating maddened vamp who swears he will never release her. Lord Astaran, king of the Macian sector, has waited over 900 years for his destined mate, Having found her as an alpha vamp, he is unable to relinquish Annie, virtually holding her hostage until he can claim her. Yet Macians cannot survive without their mate's love. How could he strip her of her citizenship, her ambassadorship, and her freedom and expect to win her heart? With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is the latest book in this exciting series, The Dagaronian Chronicles, guaranteed to keep readers coming back for more. With All That I Am by Kahira O'Donnell is available on Amazon.com and KahiraO'Donnell.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Dom Valerio is our guest this hour. He is with Upstate Supernatural. His website is www.upstatesupernatural.com. But I understand that, that you're part of or organizing something called uh, the Supernatural Expo. Tell us about that. Uh, the Supernatural Expo is basically a a uh, like a a paranormal uh, supercon type event, 
at the Finger Lakes Mall, which is the location that we uh, captured the shadow figure, and we've been lucky enough to investigate numerous times. Uh, they've been highly supportive mm-hmm. of us, so kind of to try to give back to the mall and the community, uh, we've been hosting, we'll be on our third annual Supernatural Expo. We do a public investigation, and then after the expo, we have a uh, private investigation that we stream live on YouTube and mm-hmm. on Live Paranormal, and this year we'll have it on Twitch TV and everything. Um, so what other groups uh, go to the Supernatural uh, Expo? Are there other members of the paranormal community that go up and set up shop? Is it like a regular exhibition? Yeah, we're, we're trying to have it grow. Uh, mm-hmm. Being that we are a small team and a lot of other teams didn't know too much about us, uh, for the last couple of years, it, it, it's been fairly small. This year, we're trying to grow it as much as we can. Uh, but we've had probably about four to five paranormal teams that have been centralized with the uh, expo. Mm-hmm. And we're trying to grow it up to, I believe, 40, about 40 tables. That's what we're trying to shoot wow. for. What is we the... also, I'm sorry, go ahead. We also have like a Fright Night Mansion, which they do a monster maze uh, throughout the community and psychics and tarot cards and everything. Right. Anything that kind of has to do anything with the paranormal, try to open it up to them. What is the uh, feedback you get from the people who go to the mall to do their shopping? For the most part, everybody kind of that has lived in the area, Mm -hmm. they were shocked and surprised when we actually captured what we captured. They never never really thought about it as a haunted location. Right. Uh, for the people that were shopping in the stores, the individuals that worked in the stores, it, it, to them, it, it helped validate that they weren't going nuts because they thought they were experiencing stuff, but they, they're like, um, I don't know if I really am. And then after we kind of started showing them the EVPs that we captured, the, the video footage of the shadow figure uh, within the book room, mm-hmm. And uh, numerous people started coming forward at this point saying, okay, yeah, actually I saw this, but I didn't want to tell anybody. So what is your your take on ghosts? What is your theory on why or even how they can exist? Uh, Actually, that question I do ask on one of my other shows that I do as well Mm -hmm. on on YouTube, the interview of the ghost hunter. But uh, my theory for why or how they exist Mm -hmm. is if they died in a traumatic way, they aren't aware that they're dead. Uh, Say it's a young child that passed away. They're not aware that they've passed on. They they still think that they're alive. Uh, Whereas other spirits or apparitions, per se, it's kind of like a photograph. You know, something traumatic happened to them and they're living that that scenario over and over again. But how is it possible a dead person does not know they're dead? Uh, That actually goes way back to uh, Indian and Gypsy uh, folklore, Mm -hmm. is that the spirits, when they see their reflection, whether it's in a pond, whether it's in a mirror, since they see the reflection, they automatically think that they're alive because they they see that they're still there. How can they see a reflection? Like, I know it's a folklore, but folklore doesn't mean it's real. It, for, I mean, for the folklore of it, even individuals nowadays will mm-hmm. still do the same thing. They'll flip their mirrors around when somebody passes away. And whether it's true or it's not true, with a lot of legends, there's a small fragment of truth within the folklore or the legend. Okay, but what, so, what, is, what, is the, what is the reason for flipping the mirror? Because if you're telling me that the dead person looks in the mirror and they see the reflection, what difference would it make if they could see the reflection or not? If, if they weren't able to see the reflection, then they wouldn't be able to recognize that they're still in existence. Whereas if they can see the reflection, they're automatically going to think, okay, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. You know, they see themselves. Whether or not that that is true, I'm still, you know, trying to research that through communication. So, why don't they, why do they hang around? 
like if they're dead, why don't they go wherever dead people go? Whether it's heaven, whether it's uh, to another dimension, whether they get reincarnated, why stick around? I, I've I've heard through a lot of other individuals, mm -hmm. as well as through my communication, um, some older individuals that I've investigated for numerous years, they have given me insight that spirits stay and linger to watch over their family members, to console them after they're, they have died, to just be there for them. Uh, for me personally, mm -hmm. I've gotten communication in another aspect that they're afraid. Um, if there is a heaven, if there is a hell, they're afraid to be judged. And by being judged, are they going to go to hell or are they going to go to heaven? And a lot of them are afraid to take that step, to take that leap. Okay, now let me ask you this question. All right, if the ghost sticks around, or the spirit, because of they want to be around their family, they want to, you know, take care of things, they want to make sure that everything goes well, and I can understand that. But the majority of cases are of entities that people are not aware of that they're in the house and when the investigation comes to a conclusion and if at all possible identification is made these people have no idea who this spirit is I, I mean that, that, that can come back to uh, individuals being connected to objects you know like their home mm -hmm. their home was a special place to them so they didn't want to leave it um I, it, it's a difficult question in that aspect because the one side, like the communication I've gotten at the mall per se, uh, I've actually gotten numerous times where they're afraid of the light. They're mm -hmm. afraid to, uh, they're afraid they'll be judged. And I'm wondering in another, and, and this is kind of making a leap, mm -hmm. but maybe they're staying in those areas because they're just afraid to move on. They're afraid that the next thing is it, it is going to wipe them out completely. They're not going to exist at all. Okay. I can understand a ghost staying in a home because of the family that lives there. I can understand a ghost staying with property that it had, let's say, a house or a farm or whatever. How do we explain ghosts in a shopping center? For the ghosts in the shopping center, I mean, uh, I, I've told it to anybody that's ever asked mm -hmm. that there's so many people that come in there and there's so much energy from people being happy, mm -hmm. uh, buying something or being mad mm -hmm. from a bad sale or being uh, or, or just regular day emotions. I mean, people that work in a shopping mall are normal people that they there's a wide variety of emotions and perhaps that energy gives them more to thrive off from the other aspect is that the spirits go there because maybe it was a it was a happy place for them when they're alive is one theory mm -hmm. and the other is since there is so many people that go into a shopping mall or used to go into a shopping mall if there is a one percent chance or a two percent chance that one person can hear them or see them they're going to take that chance so that would mean every shopping center, every city, every town, every municipality, every airport, every train station, every amusement park, and, and I can go on and on and on, is filled with spirits looking to communicate with someone? There, uh, There is that chance of it. I mean, for the area that that mall back mm -hmm. in the 80s and 90s was the social spot of the area. I mean, there wasn't much else around. And I'm sure the smaller towns that had the same thing was probably the same aspect. And I have heard of other malls. I haven't had the mm -hmm. honor of investigating another one yet, but right. I have heard of other malls having, having activity at it, actually. I, I'm, I'm just thinking here, and I can't, I can't recall uh, ever having anyone do an investigation at a mall before. This is rather unique. Um, is the investigation technique any different when investigating in a mall than it would be investigating in a house? 
Uh, for for sure, because it, it's a much larger location, mm-hmm. much much larger location. With a house, you you can you can control just about everything, and with a mall, uh, there's a lot that you have to wait through right. with um, all the, the contamination aspects. You know, if there's cars going by, if there's all the arcade systems that were in the malls, you mm-hmm. end up having to unplug everything and try to get it completely powerless where there's no power running uh whereas at a residence it's it's fairly simple i mean you we we've investigated the mall probably at least 20 times at least and uh you know there's still certain sections that we probably hasn't haven't focused everything on yet because it's just so vast you know, you, you've been making a reference to um, the communications that you do. How do you do these in, uh, these communications with the spirit? What uh, do you, is it by uh, by uh, channeling? Is it by being a medium? Is it by using some of the technology that you that you've acquired and that you're inventing? Uh, a lot of the communication that we've we had from our investigation there have been through voice recorders. Uh, we've we've dabbled a little bit mm-hmm. with spirit boxes there, but not too much. I have done uh, some spirit box communication outside of the location, but a majority of it is through audio, through video cameras, and through voice recorders. So the EVPs that that you take are they recognizable right away, or do they have to be listened to later on in order to get the message? For anything that we share on our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. which is Upstate Supernatural on YouTube, yeah, yeah, um, we have our findings, our investigation uh, files. All our findings are at the bottom part of our page, and we try to only put up stuff that you're going to be able to hear. Oh, okay, um, but that that's not answering my question. My question was: Are these audio? that you hear instantaneously at the same time that you're doing the recording, or are these uh, EVPs that can only be heard after the recording session? At at that location, we've gotten both. Okay. And I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a medium mm-hmm. in any aspect. Right. Uh, but I personally have somehow tuned in to be able to hear the audible responses with my own ears and have verified it with the voice recorder and other individuals around me. What do you think about the new theory that psychologists are coming out with, with the assistance of the scientific community and neuroscience, that the EVPs are actually the thoughts of the person or the people involved in the investigation, that the EVP has nothing to do with any spirit, but it has everything to do with the, the thought process, thought projection, that's very fascinating. I mean, there, there's also the other theory of uh, pareidolia, mm-hmm. where your mind tries to create stuff. Yes, you know, just yeah. from just from audio or or from looking at a picture. I, I definitely think for for some individuals, it's it's definitely something to look into. You know, whether whether or not it's you kind of manifesting it yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I've I've gotten names. I've gotten clear responses uh rolling hills we actually got uh it's nice to meet you too which we just walked in a room and introduced ourselves and that was our response back no one that we know of has ever gotten that at that location what is it that you do that is different than to get the response that you got i treat whoever i'm communicating with as if they're a person as if i can see them Mm -hmm. physically uh, I feel that going into a location, if it is a deceased person, why not show them respect? I mean, True. You're, you're not going to walk up to a, a person on the street and call them a bum. And, and why would you do that when you do an investigation? You're not going to go in there. I try not to tell them sure. or ask them, how did you die? I, I ask them, you know, what's the last memory you had? What, what's the last thing that you remember doing? Where do you think investigating the supernatural or paranormal will be in 10 years from now? 
hopefully within 10 years, it is growing to a point where people don't have doubts, where the doubts have kind of gone away. People are now really getting to contact and to truly communicate with what's what's there around them and getting you know validation and getting facts but when you say truly communicate communication is the sending of a message and the reception of a message from another party so can you actually have conversations with spirits y- yes i because myself with some of the methods and techniques that I've done, mm-hmm. I try to do it in a real time aspect where right. I'll do burst sessions, play it back and listen to it immediately and then respond back and forth to what I hear. Do you find you have better success with digital equipment or analog equipment? For clarity, I would say analog is actually the better way to go. Uh, for portability and everything else, digital is probably the easiest function to use, but analog is definitely the cleanest and clearest. Why Why would that be? Because, uh, you know, I, I've been in the audio industry a number of years, longer than the 25 years I've been doing this show, and with, with analog, there's always the chance of getting magnetic resonance on the, uh, on the record head and playback head, whereas with digital, it's zeros and one. Well, uh, w- with a lot of the spirit communication mm-hmm. or people trying to detect spirits right. they're always testing for EMF so I mean the more electromagnetic disruption you're getting whether it's the magnetic on the analog yeah may cause you to get more communication in that aspect all right stand by you and I have to take our final break exo nation this is the exo we'll be back on the other side of this break don't go away Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. If you enjoy reading a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love From Out of the Woodwork by William S. Peckham. Sean Kennedy, a Toronto contractor, buys derelict houses, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, a century house in ruins, and starts the renovation, the house fights back. He is visited by ghosts of owners past. His visions are triggered by touching an oak mantle, reading a faded letter, opening an old locket, or opening a brand new casket in the basement. 
These visions will take you on a trip across southern Ontario from Niagara Falls to Toronto to Kingston. From Out of the Woodwork is now available in paperback and on your favorite electronic reader. To order your copy of From Out of the Woodwork, go to www.williamspeckham.com. That's www.williamspeckham.com. Welcome back, everyone. Dom Valerio is our guest this hour. Upstate Supernatural is the name of the organization. www.upstatesupernatural.com is their website. Dom, just like to uh, to finish something off or, or to clarify it, um, before we went to the commercial break to wrap up this hour here in the excellent, you know, you were saying that your preference is with an analog recorder, which is a tape recorder. Uh, but you brought something very interesting up, that the electromagnetic frequency, the EMFs, that are around alleged spirits and, and hauntings, would this not have an effect on an analog recorder where it would not have an effect on a digital recorder? Uh, yes, I believe it, it would have an effect on it more so than on a digital. Okay. Um. What would you like to tell anyone listening tonight who is thinking about, you know, becoming a paranormal investigator? What, what, what words of wisdom do you have for them? Uh, when I, I, I'm a very open individual mm-hmm. about people joining the field. I, I'm happy to see new people interested. Uh, so what I would tell anybody is uh, just find a team that is local to you mm-hmm. and talk to them and, and try to possibly join in with a public investigation Maybe talk to them to try to join their team, and learn as much as you can as as you're investigating. Uh, don't be don't be afraid to try new things. Uh, I think the only way to truly learn how to grow is by you know trying to develop new skills or at least getting to know all of the skills that you're doing. It's it's a continuous learning process, isn't it? Yes, for sure. Any uh, any suggestions for books or by by respected authors in your in your genre? Uh, for for books, there's actually a, a fantastic book, and it, it sounds stupid to, for the title, but it's uh, how uh, how to ghost hunt mm-hmm. is actually the title for it. But it has a lot of information in it. Uh, you can find that through Barnes and Nobles and, and so forth. It's probably about twenty bucks. Let's but it gives so much information about different uh, different techniques, mm-hmm. different theories, uh, a lot of communication. A lot of people get more communication through water when they're near water right. or near uh, s- certain types of uh, minerals and stones. So it's it's got a lot of information in it. I have to ask you this. There's a new Ghostbuster movie coming out. Four female Ghostbusters and one male secretary. How do you think this is going to affect the the paranormal investigation community? I, I honestly, I don't think it's going to really affect it in in a huge aspect mm-hmm. I, I, because it's more of a comedy and yeah. everybody knows it's a comedy. Uh, but that's that's one of the other aspects that's tough for the field is a lot of people don't take it seriously. Because a lot of people, when they're viewing a movie or viewing mm-hmm. TV shows, it's either super scary or it's a comedy. You know, it's not It's not like it's a video on the History Channel right. or on Discovery Channel. Hey, Dom, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Great talking to you. Continued success in Dexonation. If you'd like more information on Dom Valerio and Upstate Supernatural, visit their website at www.upstatesupernatural.com. Dot com. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Send me your emails. I love getting them, x Nation. My email address is, and has been for 25 years, X-Zone at x com. I am Rob McConnell. We'll be back on the other side of this break. And don't forget, 
Coming in May, the Exxon Channel, 24 hours of television where you can actually watch the paranormal, things that go bump in the night, real stuff, not make-believe. Well, maybe a little bit of that, just to keep everybody happy. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Thank you. 